you know, as many times as I hear that song, I don't get tired of it. <laughs> that was the theme music by Azaria. Um, I think that's going to be in one of the dungeons or something when we get all that stuff rolled out. But it is 4 o'clock Eastern on a Tuesday, which means it's time for Monster Mavericks. Yeah, slow day, slow day. You know, not too many people have jumped in the chat just yet. People tend to trickle in over time. But uh, yeah, you can, you know, if you're in the live show, you can be on, on Discord, you can be on uh, Vim, you can be on Theta, you can watch on the website, mspwaves.com, all that good stuff. Uh, so many ways. And then, of course, there's all the replays, the podcast, the video on YouTube, uh, publish 0 x leofinance.io, all of that jazz. We got Paul, we got Ron, we got me, and we'll see if anybody <laughs> decides to jump in. But yeah, man, it's been quite a week. Quite a week. So, obviously, the big news on Saturday was the land uh, pre-sale, <laughs> uh, I don't know what do you want to call it, uh, event, fiasco, um, uh, marketing opportunity, I don't know. So that's that's definitely gonna, gonna be a topic today. Is my mic moving on two sources? Audio input, oh, it is moving on two sources. Okay. Uh. I thought I had my audio all fixed up, but maybe not. So let's do, let's mute that. Properties here. USB audio. Check, check, check. That should be better. Yeah, it was moving on two sources. My bad. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, housekeeping stuff that we always like to go over. Um, you know, so there's way better. Good. Uh, so things to keep in mind, services that are available. You know, we got Deck 101. If you want to bring your cards, uh, better to send them Deck 101. You get 1% more. Hey, Gerber's in the house. My Deck 101 partner. Uh, we also have the Deck 404 service where if you want to delegate your cards and have somebody else play them or you want to play somebody else's cards and split the, split the earnings, uh, we have all that. Uh, set up for you auto magically uh, through Gerber's uh, coding genius, where uh, you know everything gets gets automatically sent out to everybody. You know every day. Uh, it's right around. It's right around now actually. Um, it's, you know, eighteen hundred UTC or something like that. It might have been an hour ago. I'm not sure, but you know, cards are are continuing to to earn money for people. Earn dark energy crystals. So uh, we have that. We have a special announcement. I don't know if we're actually ready to make the announcement, but uh, Gerber and I have been talking about some, some larger moves in the Splinterlands ecosystem. So be on the lookout for that. Um, I, we, I, we haven't actually talked about when or if we're going to publicize this, but uh, let's just say there are big things coming and if you like to buy and sell cards it's gonna be uh it's gonna be a good deal for you <laughs> i can't announce it because i i haven't actually talked with gerber about whether we're going to announce it or yet but uh so this is an announcement of an announcement i guess uh just know that if you buy and sell cards you're going to be interested and if you have cards and wished you know you had some some way to tap into their to their value without actually selling them, that's also going to be uh, of interest. So um, just uh, be on the lookout for that. Uh, so Rondon says, you can't believe how quick my gold foil spirit miner sold yesterday. So yeah, that is that is the thing. So in deck 101, we sold, I think, three or four gold foil legendaries yesterday. Tony Montana is in the house. How's it going? So yeah, it's been, it's been kind of crazy. So what happened... You know, leading into into the lands presale is that dark energy crystal prices, you know, went up above par value. Solos here. Uh, in fact, we can see that. Uh, deck USD, both. <laughs> he undercut deck 101 by one cent. I think we still sold ours. Um, so you can see that, uh, you know, go. we were in an, a nice uptrend uh, for dark energy crystal prices. And going into land sales, it, it actually poked above the 1,001 par value. 
and obviously the whole land th sale thing happened, which we'll get into in a little bit. And afterwards, it sold off. So people, um, you know, were who had been saving up for for lands and didn't get them. You know, they had all this dark ender crystal on hand, and they had this great price, and so they dumped. That's all great and everything. But what happens with the card prices is that you know people who you know because the cards are priced in U.S. dollars, but they are related to the burn value in dark energy crystals. You always have this exchange rate issue, and uh, so like what what we do with Deck One Hundred and One is we do all of our accounting in dark energy crystals. That's our unit of account for all of our Splinterlands assets. So I don't care if if it's five dollars or fifteen dollars, uh, you know, for a card. What I care about is how many dark energy crystals am I getting it for, and that's how we price our stuff. Obviously, we want to make more on both U.S. dollar and dark energy crystals, but you know, fundamentally, we're looking at the dark energy crystal value. So when 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 deck prices are high, the amount you of the the amount of the burn value in U.S. dollar terms is also high, and then when deck prices come down, then that same that same dark energy crystal profit is much lower in U.S. dollars. So uh, so consequently, the prices of of a lot of cards come down, and you know, if you were looking at some of those cards, you wanted to buy, it's like, oh, I don't want to really spend, you know, $80 on a, a gold foil, you know, something not that great. But I will spend $69 on that uh, because, you know, it's it's still, uh, you know, above burn, but it's it's a much more attractive U.S. dollar price. Then those sales start to happen. And we've seen that a lot in the uh, past couple of days. So uh, I was just looking actually here. Uh, if you look at the, uh, if you if you are on one of the streams, MSP Waves or Vim or Theta, you can you can actually see my browser here. Uh, but I was in Peak Monsters, and I went into our Explorer, and I was looking at sales. And yeah, I mean we sold. So there's a uh, Harpoonist for fourteen dollars. We sold. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. Is that a kelp something? Uh, but let's see if I can find it here. We sold, ah, here's a Lear, Lear Deep Swimmer, you know, so we sold at, um, whatever it was, <laughs> uh, we sold a, a Lear a Deep Swimmer for $71, it looks like, uh, you know, 82,000 Dark Energy Crystals is what we managed to get out of it, so, you know, these, these prices you know, if if someone's coming in with those with those U.S. dollars, it's way more attractive to spend seventy than it is to spend one hundred twenty-five. Um, but you know, in dark energy crystal terms, it still works out. So that was one of the GFLs that we sold. Uh, we sold a couple others. Let's see. Do do do. Ah, here we go. Here's another one that we sold it's for seventy-nine bucks. You know, I mean, it's it's these are these are great prices. And you know, I was looking at that, and I was looking at so. Uh, with the with the land presale, you know what impact have we seen? Um, because you know whether it was whether you were a fan or not, whether it was good or bad, we did start to see headlines like this: Spillerlands land presale sold out in 30 seconds. I mean that's a great headline. It was actually like 25 seconds or whatever it was, but um, but yeah. So we're getting we're getting some press and. Uh, Whoever wrote this article says, how quick are you? We managed to get three land plots in a few seconds when the sale opened. 20 seconds later, everything was sold out. Uh, <laughs> yes, I'm going to talk about land biz. Uh, we've seen a lot of frustration, Solo says. That's all true. All true. Um, so yeah, but but with these with these shifts in the dark energy crystal prices, you can, you can actually, you know, make a good bit in the markets. So don't let the land mania blind you to the other things that are going on in the Splinterlands ecosystem. So that's that's really my whole point with that. And, um, and yeah, so we'll get into users and everything uh, in a little bit. But yeah, everybody wants to talk about land, so let's talk about the land. So uh, if you are uh, listening to this later as a recording, or if you're not hardcore into the Splinterlands stuff, uh, what happened was is that, so Agroad has been talking about this land expansion to the game for months. Maybe maybe close to a year, and so it's going to be a uh, an empire building slash crafting um, expansion to the game. That's at at present is just a strict you know battle trading card game, 
Uh, and what that's going to do is that's going to add a second layer of complexity to the game, and and I think uh, fundamentally is going to be great for the game. Uh, it's it's very much my style of game. Uh, you know, having resource management, empire building, uh, you know, min maxing, all that kind of stuff. Love it. But uh, you know, the they have to develop it. It's going to take six months to a year. So I'm I'm saying this in November of 2020. So I figure Christmas 2021 is when we'll actually see it because everything always goes longer than than is planned, and uh, you just have to know that going into it. But so I'm reasonably confident Christmas 2021 it'll it'll be it'll be out by then. So uh, we so they broke the sale of these assets into four sections. So. Phase one is pre-sale number one, where you got a 50% discount, and that happened this past Saturday. Phase two is pre-sale number two, where you get a 40% discount, and that's going to happen in a couple weeks. And a couple weeks after that, you're going to have phase three, which will be uh, a 30% discount, and then the remainder is going to be re full retail price whenever it launches. So that's going to be uh, 30,000 plots of land at at the 50%, 30,000 at 40%, 30,000 at 30%, and then 60,000 at full retail. Total uh, total number of plots is going to be 150,000. Uh, so, you know, going into going into the the presale, the first presale, uh, a lot of people were expressing concern that well, it was going to sell out instantly, and people were just going to you know the whales were going to come in, and they were just going to buy regions and nobody's going to get anything except for these, you know, vicious whales. So I thought that was crazy, uh, honestly. <laughs> but uh, I figured maybe 15 or 20 will sell, but then the rest will be portioned up among smaller players. So uh, what they ended up doing was they ended up, you know, creating a lottery for 27, so 27 regions worth, 27,000 plots, out of the 30,000 that were available. And what the the net result of that was that you know, about, uh, you know, Biz might have been the one who actually made the post, but so, somebody made a statistics post on, on what, kind of, um, what kind of distribution it was. And it did end up being like 16, 18, something like that, individuals who bought regions, which is pretty much in line with my predictions. But then a whole bunch of other players piled into pools. And uh, they all, you know, pooled their money together, pulled the dark energy crystals together, and, um, and then, you know, entered the lottery. So we ended up with 50 lottery entries for 27 places and so that that lottery happened uh one hour before the pre-sale went live so uh oh so peak uh, so biz did did do the post uh here splitterlands land pre-sale analysis let's get the numbers uh so <laughs> lottery entry number one was me i was the first one to enter and no i did not win one of the 27 regions and i am annoyed uh i i don't think i'm I'm not frustrated, like Solo was saying, but I am. I am annoyed. <laughs> so, uh, so of the 50 entries, uh, 30 were in dark energy crystals, and 20 were in credits. Um, 46 were for regions, three for tracks, and one for plots. So you could have done one region, 10 tracks, or a thousand plots. And uh, <laughs> Ron's going to sell me something. If you have a region to sell, I will buy it. I'm telling you that right now. Uh, so he had been so Biz had been taking care, carefully keeping track of people and groups that were planning to enter. Expected were 26, unexpected were 24, and then of the individuals, uh, 21 was were an individual, seven were guild adjacent, 21 were either a pool, a group, or a guild, and one was an organization. Uh, so, so yeah, a guild adjacent in this case means individuals closely affiliated with a guild who might offer some of their land to their guild mates. So, yeah, uh, so the, the number I was really not expecting was this pool group slash guild of 21. And, um, you know, that, that really shifted the odds of everything. And so, so the lottery happened. The 27 winners were chosen. I was not one. It was very sad. And then an hour later, the, the 3,000 remaining plots opened, and that crashed the server. Uh, you know, there's, Ag was saying maybe they got DDoS'd. Um, I don't know, but whatever it was, crashed the server, things were sold out instantly, 20 seconds, 25 seconds, whatever it was. And, uh, some people got some land and most people did not. So, uh, the reaction was, uh, let's say poor. <laughs> uh, I think that's a good, a good summary. And, uh, you know, people were just like Solo said, people are very frustrated. Uh, you know, it's very frustrating when, 
you know that well a you lost out on on whatever pool you were in uh b if you weren't in a pool because you you have not engaged with the community or you're just a lone wolf like that uh then when you tried to buy you know the three thousand remaining then it didn't work you know the, the, the site functionally did not work so uh you know they were having all kinds of all kinds of issues so it's so it's understandable that people were frustrated and upset about that uh and so after this all happened and and the results were known which was you know poor for a lot of people the complaining began you know so <laughs> we saw lots of uh lots of people expressing frustration um so you know this is you know the legendary dragons they had three entries for the regions and they got zero uh so you know if you do run the statistical uh probabilities on that nine percent i guess is is the chances of that happening it's that's rough you know uh so here's that with three lottery entries you had a 14.92 percent chance of getting all three 41 chance of getting two 34 percent chance of getting one and nine percent of getting zero uh so solo says i wouldn't have been so annoyed if i showed up an hour late and it sold out but i was there on the second of the pre-sale and all i got was an empty dark energy crystal balance yeah so you know the the functional failure of the site is, is definitely understandable to be to be frustrating um you know i'm sure if they haven't already they're they're going to work out you know any any refunds that that there might be i would not be concerned about that but uh on the on the bright side the lottery function worked perfectly uh, so i ended up writing a post uh, i should probably uh, have that ready for you let's see profile and we go to splitterlands suggestions for round two so here's my idea uh, so for for pre-sale number two the the people who lost out on on the region of, of pre-sale number one of which i was one uh, are given a guaranteed placement if they want into regions for round two at the, at the higher price but we also get like a legendary totem or something like that um, so my my idea was that okay we have a couple different phases so phase one of of the second pre-sale is those 23 people who missed out on on pre-sale number one region give them the opportunity to get their money in and reserve their spot in pre-sale number two so let's say you know 18 of the 23 come back for more and uh, they are willing to pay that higher price so whatever that number is that's resolved you know at, at time one and then a couple hours go by and we have a second lottery where the the balance of of uh the balance of whoever didn't come in from from round one up to 25 regions are up for lottery so if 18 people came in from round one who who claimed their guaranteed spot that leaves seven for the region lottery of round two so that closes and whatever seven regions are are bought then th those are done and then up to you know so that's tw that takes care of 25,000 plots then up to 27,500 plots so another uh, 2,500 or 25 tracks you make those available for a lottery on the tracked level and you know close that people win or lose or whatever a couple hours go by let people assess and then for the last phase of the pre-sale the remaining 2500 plots are put up for for lottery and people get it because the lottery function worked great uh the free-for-all function of hitting the site and trying to get trying to buy yours before everybody else did not and uh so so i think they should just shift to to lotteries all the way uh, at least for the pre-sales now obviously once once things are developed and and uh, full retail packages come out then it's just you know buy as you go uh probably you know we're just speculating at this point but probably not going to sell out of sixty thousand on that uh on that full retail price whenever that is um so uh biz is saying also of the 50 entries seven were just to increase chances of people who wanted only one region they were boosting their odds six were additional pool groups beyond the first that a gilder group was already doing uh <laughs> of the 23 automatic for round two i have 14 planned to exercise one is a maybe me me i'm a maybe well well okay so here's 
here's <laughs> here's the only way I'm a maybe. So if somebody wants to sell me their region right now or between now and then for ten percent profit, that's you know they say so they paid seven point five million deck. If they want eight point two five million deck, I will buy it. Uh, but otherwise, if if nobody nobody's taken me up on that yet, so otherwise I'm in for round two with the nine million dark energy crystal uh, price. So that's that's I, I'm definitely in for a region whether it's a round one uh, region or a round two region. Uh, I'm flexible. So so I think I think my plan would work. I think that obviously prices are going to be higher and thirty thousand plots have already been sold. So the amount of demand is going to be a little bit less. Uh, clearly, we saw that there was a lot of demand, so there's that. But um, you know, I think I think this this mechanism would work fine, and I think it would be fair enough that uh, that people would uh, understand. So it, it just it just avoids the whole site crashing DDoS problem, and um, you know, avoids the frustration that Solo was saying he experienced. Uh, you know, when he, you know, refresh the site, then it looks like everything's gone and, you know, nothing's working and all that kind of stuff. Uh, greetings from Colombia. Hello to Colombia. I have a lot of clients in Colombia, actually. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's my idea for round two. So after the, after the, after the pre-sale event, let's call it, uh, to be politic, um, you know, so Agrod has his his shows on this on this network, you know, the uh, the MSP Waves network. Uh, he's got two shows: one on Saturday evenings and one on Sunday afternoons. So on the Saturday one, you know, we both we got on on the on the microphone together, and we had another uh, Canadian player whose name escapes me right this second, but uh, he was kind of a you know not not a real regular in the in the Discord, but has been hanging around. Uh, a little bit so you know we, we talked through some of the stuff and and um you know agrid was <laughs> expressing some frustration at other people's uh reactions but um but yeah so he knows that uh that things were you know some of it went great like the lottery but uh, the other parts obviously people were were disappointed with in in one way or another um the, the one criticism that I keep hearing that I think is totally uh, off base is that, you know, this is this is only for the whales, right? So, you know, as as a representative of the whales, <laughs> I, t I take a bit of offense to that because I didn't win anything. But um, but, you know, what what's ne really neglected is the amount of pooling that that went on. So um, I don't know Biz, if you, in your post they had you actually broke out. Uh, which pools won? Let's see if we can go back. Ba, ba, ba. 50 entries, winners, our results. So let's see. Uh, cat pool is definitely a, a pool. Uh, TPP, TP pool. Uh, I guess that's Team Possible. Uh, oh, they won two. Let's see. Um, Peak Monsters, they're a pool. Evelyn Clark, uh, well, that's Matt Clark's wife, I think. Uh, let's see. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead and, and lay, let us know how many how many of the winners were actually collections of other individuals rather than just one whale. So, uh, like Neosian's a whale, Glory Seven's a whale, uh, A Brockman's a whale. Um, so you're saying Neosian was was buying as a pool because that would be surprising to me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that, that's nine. Uh, oh, it's the Ocean City. Okay. Uh, so that's nine pools, and so that could be anywhere from, you know, five to to fifty or a hundred people in each one. So I mean, that's there's probably hundreds of of people represented in that. So you know, it's not like other people didn't have a chance. Uh, so the uh, so by you know the claim that that is like oh only only the fat cats are are the ones who are going to benefit from this is just is just crazy I think um, obviously there are discounts uh, and there there according to what Agrod and, and Yaba have said that there are going to be some kind of economies of scale uh, if there's some kind of transportation cost or or whatever uh, in the actual crafting side of things. But, uh, you know, 
point is, is that it's this is a pretty pretty level playing field. Now, uh, on Aggro's show on Saturday night, the uh, one of the things that was brought up was that it's like, well, you know, what if you're not, uh, what if you're not in the Discord? What if you don't have a guild? Um, and you know, the way I see it is that that's kind of the price you pay. <laughs> so, uh, you know. It, part of the game is is social you know it's a it's it's a it's a card game where you you play against other players there are guilds that are you know communities of players there's uh it's built on a social blockchain you know pive it's uh you know very heavily emphasized that you know there's there's the social element happening on discord so if you choose to ignore all that then okay that's fine but just you know that sometimes that does come with a cost uh, you know, it's it's harder to do everything by yourself. Not impossible. I mean, if you have enough money, you can do it. And we saw that with J69. Uh, you know, you just if you if you're willing to to sink in enough money, then you can you can control your own destiny without any having to worry about anybody else. Um, you know, I based on what's been shared about like having the 14 different t- terrains and and the four different kinds of of lands and the different elements and the you know the common through legendary kind of rarity stuff i figure you're going to need like three or four thousand plots in order to be able to craft every single thing so that's going to be very difficult to do um i you know on a, on a guild level or on a or on a, a team level you might be able to do it but uh but as an individual it's it's tough i mean on the first part there's only 150,000 uh plots so for one person to have four thousand that's that's a lot you know you're talking you're talking you know two and a half three percent of the total and uh you know i say that and then i think like well i personally have three percent of the alpha cards so you know doable but hard (laughs) uh so biz is saying fyi i'm thinking of using one possibly both of my automatic round two region to help out smaller players who want plots i just offer them as a round two bulk discount rate of nine dollars well it's very generous of you uh yasik is saying digi spin furious guild chickens guild is it Digispin, the super cool guy that made a stream recently? No, no idea. Um, so yeah, <laughs> so Digispin won a region by himself, and Crypto Man nine seven six represented the Chicken Guild in a pool. Um, so yeah, you know, and and the other thing that uh, that people were complaining about is like, well, if you wanted to make it fair, you could just you know let as many people buy as you wanted to, and then uh, you know honor whatever you know bulk discount price. And everybody would be happy. It's like, well, sort of, uh, except that you know the I was just listening to the AMA from last week, and the the breakdowns of the thirty thousands and the pricings uh, was calculated in order to fund the development. And I have to assume that Yabba knows what he's talking about when he's when he's uh, calculating these these prices of you know how much money are we going to need in order to pay the developers pay the designers and and do all the stuff in order to make this thing successful so um you know you have to take a a little bit of faith that that yeah but knows what he's talking about there and brave ads all right uh so you know if they were to sell more at the lower rate then you run the risk of shortchanging the actual development of the project And, and obviously that would be cutting off your nose to spite your face kind of thing. Don't want to do that. So I'm okay with the $30,000, 30,000 steps, uh, you know, plots, uh, groups in the pre-sales. And I'm okay with the escalations in prices. So, you know, one thing I I pushed back on Ag about was that, you know, in a, in a pre-sale kind of environment like this, you know, normally there's, there's some kind of development or, um, or increase in certainty in order to justify uh, a raising in price. So, like, if you are if you have a startup, for example, and you have you know a, a seed round of financing, and then you know multiple rounds after that, each round hopefully uh, is at a higher and higher valuation, and that's because the company's more mature. Uh, you know, it's more known as far as you know, or is this team able to execute whatever plan it is, and there's a track record of you know whatever performance has happened to date and you know that justifies the higher valuations but in this case you know we're we're three weeks between rounds of pre-sale and we're not going to know a whole lot uh about you know the the changes in 
uh, in the development because there's just not a whole lot of time. So, you know, Ag came back to me and, on that and he, he said two things basically. So thing number one was that they are going to be uh, having development meetings and more information will be known, resolving some degree of the uncertainty. So that, that uh, you know, between the different stages. So that helps to justify the increase in price. And the other thing was that the, the uh, financial result of the f previous rounds is information in, unto itself. And, and that's actually true in the sense that if you are going into this and you think, well, if I'm paying 9,000 dark energy crystals per plot, is it worth it for, um, is it worth it compared to the 7,500 dark energy crystals per plot? Uh, and, you know, by the fact that you already know that somebody, uh, a lot of people were willing to pay that, that 7,500, that gives you a bit more information and a bit more confidence that your 9,000 won't go to zero. <laughs> so still could, but less likely given that uh, there's already been some kind of success. And that's all true. Uh, you know, I think his points were, were valid, but you know, it's still, I don't know, depending on how much information is released between, uh, between pre-sale one and pre-sale two, I think will, will dictate how much appetite people have at this higher price. So, you know, it's, it's a 10% uh, reduced discount, but if you're comparing from the discount of round one, that's a 20% increase going from uh, 7,500 up to 9,000. <coughs> so, you know, obviously economics is what it is and the higher a price a certain thing is, the lower a uh, given demand is for it. Uh, also, like I said, you know, 30,000 plots have already been sold. So. So it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, how that all happens. But I hope they end up going with lottery only uh, for the diff and then in different phases, like I spelled in my plan. You know, actual numbers can differ, obviously. But uh, I, I hope that they do that mechanic so that we don't have these, um, these issues that we saw last week. Um, but, you know, we got some good press out of it. You know, this is... Uh, <laughs> This is a nice, uh, a, a nice screenshot to grab, you know, and we're seeing um, we're seeing some interest on on some of the NFT investing uh, communities. So that's that's part of the point, and they are certainly going to get they are certainly getting their headlines. Um, I know Agra's doing a, uh, a a panel of some kind on NFTs and gaming and stuff in a couple days, so it would be interesting to see what happens there. But, uh, but yeah, so that's, that's my, that's my postmortem on the lands. Um, you know, people are frustrated. It didn't go off great for the free for all portion, but, uh, I think net net worked out. Okay. Um, and you know, the people who are upset are really just upset that they didn't win, <laughs> which is, which is kind of always the, uh, which is kind of always the, the case in, not just cryptocurrency, but in general. It's like, you know, if I had been the winner, I'd have been a lot more happy about it. That's just human nature, I think. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to lands as a whole, and I'm going to be buying in, you know, when I can. <laughs> Hopefully soon. Uh, you know, I, again, I was listening to the AMA uh, from last week, and uh, they were talking about, uh, you know, the shapes of the regions and how, uh, you know, you know, you're not going to be able to get, you know, ex ex you know, squares of a thousand. So that's going to be, uh, that's going to be interesting to see how they make that more real life mappy. Uh, <laughs> Clove says it was a sad day. Yeah. Immortal gods didn't get anything and I didn't get anything. And I don't know if, I don't know if anybody else had, was in the lottery uh, from our guild there, but, uh, but yeah. Uh, oh, that's another thing. So some people were, were saying, you know, who were coming into this court in anticipation of everything are saying, Oh, but you know, I'm not in a pool. It's like, well, there are pools available. If you know, talk to your guild. It's like, well, and people were saying, it's like, well, I don't want to, I don't want to pay my guild, you know, all this, all this dark energy crystal. Cause you know, maybe they run off with it. Right. So there's a, there's a tangible fear of loss there. And I made the point that, you know, maybe you need to be in a better guild. <laughs> so, uh, or maybe you need to make one, or maybe you need to uh, engage with the community more so that you know who can, who is trustworthy. Um, you know, in general, Switzerland's people have been extremely trustworthy overall, 
uh, you know, I've never had any problems uh, with uh, peer-to-peer trades. Uh, so, you know, and I know there have been a few uh, community-wide, but very, very few in the uh, in the total. But so, like, I'm in Immortal Gods with Clove. Clove's our is our uh, illustrious leader, and you know, I have no qualms whatsoever about you know turning over a million dark energy crystals uh, because I know that these are good people. So. You know, uh, to some degree, you got to take responsibility for your own for your own situation. You know, uh, Biz is asking how much land will sell out round two and round three. Uh, you said you don't think post sale land will sell out quickly. Uh, <laughs> and Biz is in Immortal Gods as well. Yes, uh, we got quite a number of people because there's some subsidiary guilds as well. Uh, I think we're up to three. Uh, I'm not sure about that, but um, at least two. But yeah, I think round two sells out. I think round. Th- I mean, ra- round two sells out day one, I think. Uh, round three, maybe, maybe not. Um, and then I think that the remaining 60,000 at full retail, unless we get a ton of users, will, uh, will you know, sit and, you know, grind for a bit. Uh, you know, I'm, you know, I did get 18, I think, 17, 18 uh, plots through the uh, liquidity pool incentives for, for month one. And uh, so that'll be at least something. So what I did with my Dark Energy Crystals after losing the lottery is I took four million and put it over on, on Uniswap uh, just because, you know, uh, the price was dropping and I got, um, it got low enough that I was confident it wasn't going to drop too much more, but, you know, it could bounce around a little bit. So, you know, the way the Uniswap pools work is that as, as one thing is, is trending, you are acquiring the other thing. So if we have Ethereum and Dark Energy Crystals, people are selling Dark Energy Crystals. The person they are selling them to is the people in the liquidity pool. So uh, if you know that and you're looking to gain Dark Energy Crystals, which I was, uh, I, you know, by, by adding that liquidity there, I, I put myself in the path uh, of that transaction. So I was looking it up uh, over here and... This is from liquidity.vision. Uh, so this is my Dark Energy Crystal Ethereum pool. And so my starting amount was 5 million, you know, 300,000. Uh, or 5 million, 33,000, rather. And I've gained 161,000 um, Dark Energy Crystals by, by just being in the pool and allowing people to sell their Dark Energy Crystals to me in exchange for Ethereum. So basically, that 161 uh, thousand dark energy crystals yeah, ended up costing me 0.36 uh, Ethereum and kind of uh, I, I'm underwater 30 bucks on that so that's that's okay <laughs> basically uh, and you know I am I'm pretty confident so right now we are at uh, let's see Uniswap deck right now we are at 0.000869 or 869 splintoshis I am anticipating that that goes back up to a thousand splintoshis as we approach pre-sale number two, uh, because you know some some the people who were who were upset and frustrated and all that from pre-sale number one they will get over that and then the FOMO will start into round two because things are just going up in price. Uh, it's not like you know you're going to be able to get the 7500 7, uh, crystal price in the future. Because the people who are going to be uh, selling their plots uh, later on, you know, there's no reason really to take a loss, given that there's demand. Maybe it's not 20,000 Dark Energy Crystal demand. Maybe it's 15,000 Dark Energy Crystal demand. Uh, that could be. But it's still, you know, a doubling. So, I mean, whether, whether you buy at 7,500 or 9,000, it's still going to be, I think, a good trade. So I'm looking to make, you know, 20% on the Dark Energy Crystals. And then I'm looking to um, to buy into the land when when it's available. So the reason I chose the four million is because that's basically all the Ethereum that I had. <laughs> so I've got another bunch sitting in my game wallet. Uh, actually, I might have put it on on Hide Engine. I'm not sure, but uh, either way, it's it's sitting there waiting. Uh, <laughs> Clove bought some plots and feels better now. <laughs> so what do I think of the Dark Energy Crystal rate over the next month or two? Will it reach? above par like I did last time when we get to round two and then drop again. Yeah, pretty much. That's what I'm expecting. So uh, I've been talking to Agrid a lot about the Dark Energy Crystal price and the, 
the way they the way they've structured the market is that you know there's this par value right so uh a thousand splintoshis or a thousand dark energy crystals is one us dollar and all that comes down to is the fact that you can buy a pack of whatever the current edition is for 2,000 dark energy crystals, which is also e equal to $2. So, you know, anytime the price of dark energy crystals goes above that, then you're going to run into uh, issues because people are going to turn around and then start burning cards uh, or, you know, selling things off, you know, just through the Uniswap market in order to bring that price back down. And I was doing a little math uh, the other day, and the uh, the expected value of a of an untamed pack in dark energy crystal terms is something like five hundred and thirty five something like that. I'm gonna open my uh, my Excel sheet here. It takes a minute because there's so much data. <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So let's say let's just assume that it's five thirty five. So at most, uh, you know the 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 aggregate value of dark energy crystals can go two dollars to 535 dark energy crystals and uh you know th so that's basically uh, a four to a four times return compared to where we are now so that's that's the pretty much absolute limit because once it goes above that it's cheaper to or it's profitable let's say to buy uh to buy packs for two dollars and then burn all the cards and then sell them into the market so you know the arbitragers are there's no way they're going to let that situation persist uh you know we got gerber here in the house he's he's a master arbitrager and uh so you know that's that's the absolute limit so when it comes to you know cryptocurrency uh or crypto tokens or whatever you want to call it um the blockchain assets let's say you know forex is nice you know and if you want to give if I if I give you a dollar and you give me four back, that's cool. But in terms of the other things that are that are available in crypto, then you know it's not that attractive. So, you know I've been thinking about this as far as uh, you know what that means for the future of the economy of the game, and you know it's it's cool that we'll have a little kind of mini stable coin. Um, that's that's attractive in its own way. Uh, but you have to think so when it comes to providing liquidity on the Uniswap pool, it's you know that you're you're always going to be on the losing side, essentially, uh, assuming the demand is there at all in order to 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 hit you know par value. So I I don't know how much I'm going to stay in the pool after after uh, you know the the presale happens, but. Uh, It'll be interesting to see how that all works out. So let's see. Was was my number right? Oh, it's five seventy five, not five thirty five. Uh, five, I think five thirty five. I think about the American election, <laughs> which was quite the interesting thing that happened uh, last week, and it continues to happen. So I won't. I don't. I won't get into that now. I don't think. But uh, it's been. It's crazy. You know, if you if you pay attention to the things that. You know, it's not necessarily making it onto the mainstream news. Uh, so uh, Paul says, when people pull their deck back out, it will cost more for seven hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, that that's probably true. So, you know, I I'm like like I was saying before, I expect the price of dark energy crystals to rise going into the presale and then and then drop again. Um, and will Splitlands need to offer incentives to keep people in the pool after the next two thirty day periods on Uniswap rewards? Yes, I think so. Um, so, I mean, the plots rewards uh, as an incentive is cool. Uh, you know, it's it's a nice bonus, considering I needed my Dark Angel Crystals to sit there anyways. But after all that's over, uh, I think they're going to have to come up with something in order to, to make it more attractive to, uh, to sell. Because, you know, the fees are not great. Um, you know, there's there's relative to the volume uh the supply is is very high which is great for price stability but is not great for uh liquidity pool providers earning uh earning on their dark energy crystals so you know it'd be better um let's just say hypothetically someone were to borrow um uh where someone were to borrow dark energy crystals at, at an interest rate you're probably going to do better on that than just the straight market fees uh in uniswap so, you know, what that looks like and how they incentivize that, you know, I don't know. But uh, I think they will need to do something. Um, 
but you know, when when we saw that the the price went above par, uh, we saw a lot of burning and a lot of selling. Uh, so I don't think that mechanic is going to change. And the the net result of that is that the the price of cards has gone up quite a bit. Uh, here's the market cap uh, chart from the uh, from SM Voter. And, you know, uh, you always have to take this with a little bit of a grain of salt in that, you know, they'd only look at list prices and, you know, market cap is, is great, but, you know, it's not the same as uh, as an individual card rising because more cards are sold, increasing the market cap because they increase supply, all that kind of stuff. Uh, what would be interesting, actually, would be to see this number and then, uh, you know, kind of standardize that or normalize it against the number of packs that have been sold. Uh, so, um, yeah, that might be worth doing. But anyway, values are high, and the liquidity on the markets is low. So if you go look at Peak Monsters or Monster Market or whatever you want to look at, uh, let's go over there. Ba, ba, ba. So let's look at the Untamed. And I don't know, let's look at some commons. Pick a random one. Let's look at Cobalt Bruiser. He's handy, he's got knockout, uh, and he's going for ask price is uh, three cents, bid is one cent, and market value is uh, lately been closer to that one cent. But um, so if we look there, there's 654 cards in the market, and we go to the bulk, we say that there are, let's see, can we do, can we go over 400? Oh, we can, all right. So let's go to 800. Oops. So we can get we can get two max level cards. Can we get three? Can we get 1,200? We can get three, and that pretty much takes the whole thing. So there's three max level cards available for Cobalt Bruiser, and of course by the time you get up to those higher prices, uh, you're talking you know 120 dollars a card. That's that's ridiculous. Uh, so nobody's going to buy that. So effectively two. Um, Cobalt Bruises are available if you were to come in and wanted to buy some for your deck. Uh, if we go to look at a more expensive card, let's pick some epics. Let's look at uh, Pyromaniac. I like Pyromaniac a lot. Um, so there's 166 cards on the market. And let's see, 46 uh, will cost you, eh, not too bad. So that's one. And then we go to 92. Okay, we can get 92. Uh, what's, what's 92 plus 46? I don't know. Uh, 40, uh, 46 times 3 is 138. Can we get 3? 138. Uh, we can get 3, and it'll cost us uh, basically 50% premium. 46 times 4 is 184. 184. Alright, so then we're, if we pay double, we can get 4 Pyromaniacs. And that basically eats up all the supply. So, you know, there's, there's four max level pyromaniacs available. And, and if, you, if you look at this kind of analysis, then you'll see that uh, this is kind of the case all across the board. Um, so let's look at Dark Haon. Dark Haon I use a lot. 61 cards on the market. Um, let's see. So if we do, let's say 33, we got that. 44, we got that. 55. Okay, we can do that. Let's say 99. Are there nine cards available? There are nine cards available, but you would be paying a 100% a premium. So, uh, you know, there's not... A, so so let's say one person comes in and wants to build a decent-sized stable of decks. Uh, it's impossible. <laughs> I mean, they're... <laughs> uh, Dark Aeon is awesome because it's a cat. Yeah, I suppose so. Um, so, you know, it's... It's really one one whale or a few decent sized users coming in and wanting to build out their decks, uh, and then the the market disappears. So um, that's an issue. Um, so you know, ideally, as more as prices rise, people come in as sellers, and then they 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 sell into that rising price. But you know, I think that's that's pretty bullish for the overall the overall you know situation. You know, each one of these shows, I like to look at my own, uh, my own collection. 
so there, if some big new whale comes in, there are some players willing to sell their whole collections. Yeah, that's true. If they're on Discord <laughs> and they can make these connections, uh, but you know somebody who's totally totally outside of everything is uh, coming going to come in. You know they're probably going to look at the market first. Um, but yeah, there are there are some whales looking to sell out. That is definitely true. I think they're doing it at the exact wrong time, but you know, that's just me. I guess I'm a bit of an optimist there. So uh, we're looking at for my collection. We're looking at 82, and uh, I actually went on a bit of a buying spree the day after or the day of the the land sale because I wanted to fill out all my rewards cards that I didn't have. Um, so I went ahead and did that, and I bought some regular, some gold foil, depending on what was available and what made sense price wise. I spent about uh, 400,000 Dark Ninja Crystals, something like that. Um, but still, you know, 82 is a nice nice bump. So, you know, right before, right as Untamed was being dropped, I hit a high on that value, because I used the market price. I hit a high of like 96, something like that. Uh, and it had a low of 40-something during the dregs of when J69 was selling out. Uh, so now we're, we've made a nice bounce back. So you can see that I have not reached my all-time high like the market cap has because, you know, my uh, my cards are mostly alpha and beta and I only have a smattering of untamed. But um, but overall, it still made a nice recovery. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty pleased with all that. And uh, I will continue to to build out slowly my, my untamed collection. So you know, I want to have one of everything. And... You know, with the mystery, with the changes in the mystery potion, no longer giving a unique card, uh, I think I actually have a shot at that because I've actually gone and and I have an Archmage Arius, I have a Prince Julian, and I have a Mighty Dricken. Uh, I've actually used the Mighty Dricken once or twice, so that's that's always fun. Um, you know, when you when you get a chicken kill, that's that's like the best thing. Uh, but um, and you know, so this is like a dragon chicken kill. But yeah, so I don't have gold foils of those, but I have the regular, and that's that'll have to do. I'm not gonna, definitely not going to have gold foil of everything. Um, so so yeah, I mean just things things to keep an eye on. You know, I don't think prices of cards are going lower. Uh, you know, whatever is in and out of meta can change. You know, for the current edition, uh, but the uh, but for the older editions, I think prices are just going up. Uh, Solo's asking, do you plan on converting your alphas to betas? No way. <laughs> I don't know why I would do that. Uh, and Biz is asking, what do I think of the change to the mystery prize? I, th I think it's okay. Um, you know, Prince Julian had its issues. So Archmage Arius I use a lot. So I think that was a great card. Um, Julian had its issues with the with the nerfing. Uh, Dricken has been kind of a dud. So um, I think just cutting it here uh, is, is an acceptable uh, thing. To level up betas. Uh, no, I don't need to level up my betas. I got plenty. <laughs> uh, in fact, let's let's see how many betas do I have. Uh, I have. Oh, it doesn't show it on on the on this bar. But uh, I have a lot of betas. So this is this is my beta collection, right here. Here's my alpha collection. So, you know, I gotta keep my alpha flesh golems away from Matt Clark. So that's <laughs> that's that's one of my great pleasures in life. Is that I got these guys right there that Matt Clark will never get. So is my plan to sell them when they're overvalued, or are alphas overpowered and good for battles? Well, I mean, they're not overpowered. They're the same as as the beta cards, but uh, they do have the the ten percent dark energy crystal battle bonus. And as as more users come in, and Dark Angel Crystal inflation goes down, uh, at least for battles, then I think they'll be worth more and more. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. Um, but there is that limit on it because of the way the the mechanics work of the Dark Angel Crystal power value. So, yeah, I mean, I probably will sell at some point. Um, so like right now, what I do is uh, almost all my cards are either delegated to my playing account or are delegated to other players. And, you know, I make whatever it is, uh, you know, through deck 404, I, you know, a couple hundred thousand uh, Dark Energy Crystals uh, each season. And uh, I haven't done the math on that lately, but uh, it's, it's nice. You know, it's an acceptable return. Yes, alphas earn you more in battles, absolutely. Um, so if you have a gold alpha that you're using, then you get a 20% boost per card. 
so you know, I use a lot of gold alphas in, in my playing account, so I often basically get double uh, the the regular battle winnings uh, for my given level. Um, which is what actually? I don't even know right now. I know I'm in diamond, and last I checked the leaderboard, I was actually doing okay, placing for packs. Uh, leaderboard. Come on. Oh, dropped to number 12. So, doing okay. Yeah, so plus 10% per alpha slash promo card and per gold foil. So you get 20% for promo golds or alpha golds. Uh, so, you know, they're they're handy. Um, I'm a fan. And they look better. I like, the, I like the artwork better than the betas. But, um, you know, that's just me. Some people like the uh, like the betas better. I think they're nuts, but you know, what are you gonna do? People have their own taste, even though they're wrong. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, I'm following the Matt Clark model of so I do one season in diamond, pl try to get packs. Next season I go up to champion, try to get as high as I can for season rewards and quest rewards, and then on the reset I'm put it back into diamond one, and then I'm competitive for packs again. So just doing that that back and forth. And Paul's saying we need beta at plus five percent. Yeah, I think they will do something for beta at some point. I don't know I don't know if it'd be plus five percent or not, because the numbers working out might be plus three percent. I don't know. But uh yeah, I think there will definitely be something. Yeah. <laughs> Clove says my first love, alphas. Yeah. I mean for all the OGs, alphas was where it's at. You know, we were play we were we were trading these cards before there was a game. Uh, months before there was a game. So uh, there was all kinds of uh, fun. Do I plan on opening packs with potions? Uh, typically, yes. Uh, I do have my whole spreadsheet on whether that's worth uh, while or not. So right now I'm focused on opening my dice because I bought, I don't know, 500, 800 dice and I still haven't opened them all because I don't have enough potions. And the drop rates have been tweaked such that you're, they're expecting you to use your potions in order to get the, the even distribution of cards throughout the different rarities and, and gold foils. So... Uh, I'm just slowly doing that. As, basically, each season, I'm going through and I'm, I'm opening a few dice here and there, here and there. Uh, so that's priority number one. After that's all done and I get a max set of dice, uh, at least regular foil, then I will go back and start filling in my untamed and uh, finish that off. Because I have, I have a bunch of silver untamed accounts, but I don't have any max untamed. Uh, but you know, wouldn't you know it, we are coming to the end of the hour. Uh, thank you all for joining me here and chatting with me. Uh, if you are listening to this as a recording, make sure you go in and you know join the live audience. It's way more fun. You can you can laugh at Ron how he got only only potions and a couple dark energy crystals for his quest rewards. <laughs> anyway, that's it for me this week. I'll see you all next time.